I want to welcome all of you to the 49th PAHO Directing Council. The United States sincerely appreciates the opportunity to host this meeting. And my thanks to all of you for taking the time and effort to travel here. President Barack Obama said in August at the North American Leaders Summit, our common aspirations can only be achieved if we work together in solidarity to improve health in the region. The people of this hemisphere expect it from us. At the beginning of this new administration, I'm honored to renew our commitment to the promise of this strategic alliance. It's a promise that the Pan American Health Organization has made real since its founding as the Pan American Sanitary Bureau in 1902. And I'm proud that our country has been part of this effort from the beginning. Now let me stop here and congratulate Dr. Rosas on appointing Dr. John Andrus to your staff. PAHO members know Dr. Andrus is PAHO's lead in immunization technical advisor. In the US, we know him as the director of the Global Health Master's Program at George Washington University, just down the street. With 25 years of working in the field of vaccines in developing countries, his appointment as PAHO's deputy director is significant, especially now that the 2009 H1N1 influenza is the predominant flu virus worldwide. The US deeply values our on-the-ground collaboration with PAHO on the H1N1 flu. We've been grateful for your openness with regard to surveillance and how rapidly you've shared information. We've depended on your experience to respond to H1N1 domestically. We aim to be just as open about sharing what we've learned and helping to minimize illness and deaths. There's no greater mission than working together to keep our populations safe. That commitment is the reason we've made 10% of our vaccine supply available to the World Health Organization, joining Australia, Brazil, Switzerland, New Zealand, Italy, France, Norway, Germany, Japan, and the United Kingdom, countries that have either donated vaccine or donated its purchase power. It's why we donated $34 million worth of antiviral medication to PAHO stockpile earlier this year. But our commitment to immunization in the Americas is not limited to the H1N1 flu. PAHO's regional immunization program is recognized globally for eradicating polio, eliminating measles, and is on the verge of wiping out rubella. CDC recently signed a five-year, approximately $24 million agreement to protect these achievements and meet future challenges. Today, I'm pleased to announce an additional $1.4 million from our health diplomacy program to strengthen national immunization programs in the first year of the agreement. But our commitment to health is not just restricted to immunizations. Just as President Obama has made the health of every American in the United States a top priority of his administration, we want to support helping to eliminate health disparities for every American in the northern and southern hemispheres. Later this week, the United States National Cancer Institute will announce partnerships with the governments of Argentina, Brazil, Mexico, and Uruguay that will help improve cancer outcomes for Hispanic populations in the US and Latin Americas. The Office of Global Health is helping fund health worker training in Central America. Part of a collaborative effort with PAHO, the Gorgas M Memorial Institute, the CDC Central America and Panama Center, and two leading US universities. President Obama has launched a $63 billion initiative on global health. That initiative will set the highest standards for metrics, monitoring, evaluation, and research. It will follow the principles of coordination, sustainability, and women-centered programming. And it will make a real commitment to country ownership. We'll build on our pledge to fight diseases like malaria and AIDS. The initiative will place a new emphasis on maternal and child health. 
In this day and age, we still have half a million a year dying from pregnancy or pregnancy-related causes. And we're determined to improve health care for women. When women have access to health care and other resources, they invest them in their families. Childhood mortality declines. Standards of living rise. Societies thrive. This is the moment to act. Here in this room, we have so many formidable examples of the power of women. We have Dr. Murtis Roses Periago, the first woman to lead the world's oldest international health agency. We have Dr. Margaret Chan, who was a leader in fighting the avian flu, and whose strong stewardship in responding to the first global pandemic in 40 years may Mel be the reason we work so cooperatively together today. Dr. Chan will long be remembered for her work in combating the H1N1 virus and for her unprecedented leadership in focusing on the health of women and girls around the world. One of my top global priorities here in the U.S. will be to build partnerships that expand our resources and knowledge base in fighting diseases and improving health care both here at home and abroad. I'm very pleased that on Wednesday, many of you will join the top leaders of our agency to sign the letters of agreement, creating the United States Latin American Cancer Research Network. The network will link gov governments, institutions, and researchers to advance cancer research, set up clinical studies and multinational training programs, and increase access to medical technology in the U.S. and Latin America. And it will focus on breast cancer first. I hope I'll have a chance to visit with each of you at the reception we're hosting on Wednesday evening in honor of the 49th Directing Council of PAHO. It's a small gesture, but a genuine one, to let you know how much I'm looking forward to a close working relationship with all of you. So please accept my sincere wishes for a productive and enjoyable conference, and I hope to see all of you at the reception. Thank you.